Jesus, we lift up your name. 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 We lift up your name. It is really an honor for me to come into this room of devoted people. A room of people who love the word. A room of people who hear the spirit of God speaking to the word of God on early morning, early mornings. For you to start out your day with God on your side. Just imagine how wonderful and how beautiful that is. Today I want to talk about something that's very important. That is widely spoken of in the New Testament. Particularly in the ministry of Jesus. You, and we can count the number of times the numerous number of times Jesus spoke about it. We're speaking about the value of the mouth and words that come out of our mouth. The Bible would have us to check our words. The Bible would have us to check out what we say to other people. So I want to take a scripture reading as the basis of my, you know, comment and, and, and discourse this morning. It says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 29. And I'm going to take it right to 32 if I can, but I want to focus on 29. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Every time when the English language and grammar says, let no, it speaks into, don't give permission to. Do not allow it to happen. It places an emphasis on the denying the prevalence of. So what is the Bible saying to me that I should deny the prevalence of? Is words coming out of my mouth that are corrupt. The word corrupt, which means can't be used, is spoiled. It's bad. It's bad for listening. It's bad for impact upon people's hearts. When people will hear me saying these words, they will begin to think less of my Christianity, of my character, and think less of my integrity. So therefore, the Bible says integrity has a language. Just like lack of belief and lack of faith and fear has a language. If you read the scripture properly, you find out that fear speaks unbelief and, and lack of faith. You find out that faith speaks possibility and confidence. It claims the answer before the miracle arrives. So every attribute and every ideal and character and characteristics in life has its own language. If you come among the certain group of people, the gangs, they have their own particular language encoded for that group of people for them to understand. And the Bible says to us as Christian people, there's a language that seems to keep the blessings around. I'm not interested in any language that chases away my blessedness and the blessing. 
that kills everything that I work hard for and that takes away from me everything that God has worked out to get across to me and give to me either by grace or by answering my prayer. Because the Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So therefore, tongue, 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 you kill everything I've worked for. And tongue, 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 you build everything that I'm building. You help me, you come alongside me. As my hands, I work hard, my tongue also works hard to add a brick upon brick for me to build this house called my success and my prosperity. Therefore, the text says, let no corrupt word proceed out of the mouth. Therefore, it focuses, it directs my efforts to make sure that I train every day to check what comes out of my mouth. I want to make sure it's not something that's destructive. It goes on to say, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for, and ne what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. So the Bible says, the words that are right to come out of my mouth are those words that build, that bring edification. That word edification, it's a, it's a term that, is, that has been mostly used in the New Testament by the Apostle Paul. What did he have in mind when you, you, when you read the word edification? You find out that it falls under four or five categories. The first one is to recharge a flat battery. That's, that's, that's almost similar to that. You find someone that is flat, ran out of power, life is down, problems have consumed the energy off, prayerless. They're no longer praying like they should. They're no longer praising like they should. They can't leave, raise their hands in worship because they think that God has brought problems to them and they've gone through so much in life, they're beginning to doubt who they are. They are flat like a battery. The Bible says that the words minister edification, you recharge their battery. May your words recharge me when you speak to me. May I, what I say, recharge you. I don't know what has taken all the energy out of your battery. Maybe you've been fighting demons at night, fighting the spirit, the husband spirit. You have been fighting maybe with your sister or your brother based on a disagreement. Maybe there's been intense fight, as one preacher said, intense negative fellowship with your wife and fighting with your spouse at home. Maybe with your business partners. It has drained all the energy what you've been fighting about, school and matters of academics. But the Bible says, out of my mouth must come out words that make sure I recharge you. I pray by the Holy Ghost that today you might be recharged. Let power come back. Let song come back. Let grace come back. Let the music come back. Let the jumping up and down come back. Let the desire to pray come back. That's the first part of edification. The second part of edification, now not only you recharge your flat battery, number two is to build a person. You build a person has not been properly built. When you, when you deploy the term edification in the book of 1 Corinthians, you find out they were highly gifted, but they were babies in Christ. They were not properly grown ups. They were not mature, they were immature. They were babies in the Lord. So to edify is to bring strength, tenacity, direction, and grit to the life of person who's weak, who's not grown in God, who has the zeal, but doesn't have the maturity, who has the gift, but doesn't have the character, who has the word, but they don't have the integrity to back up that word. The Bible says when you edify, you bring back that which is missing in their growth path. You make them grow in God. I pray today as we receive this, as this word of devotion, may you speak words that are going to make sure people around your life they grow and they become better and number three what does edification means it means to to launch into the spirit because it's a book for, it's deployed by paul in the book of first corinthians where he brings people to the things of the spirit it says you have been in the flesh i bring over to things of the spirit prophesy speak in tongues be led of the holy ghost know the holy spirit better i pray that what you say would edify people that would make them know the holy spirit better make them grow better and know God better. And number three, wherever their bread tree is flat and you'd recharge them, let all the good things come back. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for goodness and your mercy that have spoken to us about you in Jesus' name. Amen.